Hey everybody, today we're going to do a little bit of a tech video. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a discussion, uh, sort of kind of in-depth about relays, um, how my relay logic is set up, how the relay logic that I'm going to set up, how it actually works, and just a little bit about relays and how they work internally. So over here on the left, we have drawn the bottom of a relay, and that is with the mounting bracket up. So you can see that the pins there, they all line up with the diagram here. Um, as far as I know, all Bosch style relays have this uh, same orientation with the um, 30 pin being nearest the uh, mounting bracket. Um, and speaking of 30, let's go ahead and start there. So 30, the, the 30 uh, terminal on a relay is actually your battery feed. So on mine, I have a 40 amp circuit coming from a bus bar, but it's fused and it comes in through 30. And directly below that is 87A, which is this terminal here. So my relays are 40 amp slash 20 amp 40 amp being you can run 40 amps through it triggered or 20 amps through the 87a terminal um i don't exactly know why that is and maybe somebody in the comments that understands that can explain that and uh i, I, I there's there's probably a reason again i took uh circuits way back in uh, <laughs> college um just basic circuits class but uh anyway moving on 85 and 86 are your coil uh, terminals 85 typically being your positive 86 being your negative uh, I say typically because that's kind of the the general uh, rule of thumb because not all resistor or not all relays have resistors and or diodes in them um, the relays that I do have a resistor and I've drawn one here um, and basically what that does is it protects whatever you're switching um, in this case is a negative so when you apply positive to this side and a ground to this side, you've energized a coil in here, which creates a magnetic field, which actually physically, that magnetic field pulls this tink over here. That's that click you hear. Uh, when you de-energize that, when you remove the ground or the positive, in this case, we're removing the ground, that ma a magnetic field collapses and creates a current inrush, and they call a flyback circuit. Um, what this resistor, um, and sometimes they use a diode in here, it, it absorbs that current so that you're not you know, shoving power back down the negative line and potentially damaging your ECM. <clears throat> um, they also come with a diode, like I say, that will physically block the um, current from going back that way. So, you know, you, you typically want to wire your 85 as your positive, 86 as your negative. So that's basically how a relay works. Um, and right now is what I have as shown in here is fan one, fan two, how I have them wired currently. Um, 80, 85s um, and on both of these is actually in my truck, a circuit within the American Auto Wire. It goes all the way back to the fuse panel. It's an orange wire that is specifically for this, for triggering relays. Now, when this comes through my harness, it goes into here, back out of here, and then loops over to this one because they're both on the same. There's, there's really no, I mean, I think it's a 5-amp circuit. There's nothing really happening there other than energizing these coils. Um, 30, I have these both as individual circuits going back to a bus bar, like I said, a 40-amp and a 40-amp for each fan. And then um, the green wire from the ECM for fan 1, and I don't have a blue pin, but this is the blue fan 2 wire from the ECM. goes to 86 on both of these. 87 out on both of these goes to fan one and fan two. So pretty simple. Uh, once you kind of see the internals of how this all works, it, it makes more sense. Where it gets a little crazy is I'm going to be adding in a third relay. So GM did this on a lot of cars, and the logic that I have found and kind of modeling this after is actually after the uh, early 2000s F bodies. So what they do is they add a third relay in here that basically takes the fans, both fans, so fan one will trigger and both fans will run at half speed. And then I'll, I'm going to show the logic here in a minute. When, when fan two triggers, it actually triggers this relay, takes them out of series, and they both run full speed. Pretty trick, pretty simple. It does have one fatal flaw on it that we'll discuss once I get it open. But it's kind of neat because it's a function of Ohm's law here. Um, I being current, voltage, and resistance. We know the resistance roughly, well, the resistance of fan one and fan two are going to be equal because they're both the same fan brand, uh, same fan brand, same motor. So we know these are constants. F1 
you know, so R1 and R2 are constant. The voltage is constant. So we can calculate, you know, what our, our current is, what our voltage is going to be, um, just by Ohm's law and trying to figure it out. I know that when you put two fans in series, the voltage is going to have. So we're going to have, if I have 12 volts going in here and here, well, through here, because it's going to be powered, once you see this, it's powered to this one. So you're going to get 12, uh, 6 volts here and 6 volt here. Uh, just by using Ohm's law and, and, and just knowing that our resistance loads at both of these points in the Ohm's law equation is constant. And we know that our voltage in is constant. So we can use that to find our current. We can use, I mean, there's any number of ways because you've got I equals V over R and you've also got P equals uh, voltage times current. So you can use those to kind of calculate everything you need to know about the circuit and confirm because I went down and I actually physically I put a clamp on it and measured my current in uh, this this mode and then my current in series mode and ran the math and the numbers matched so you know it, it gets a little squirrely because you have and I'm kind of getting a little technical here is you know when you start adding in things your resistance is actually going to go up which will cause your current to go down which is kind of a good thing um, once I show this because you have resistance of all the wires. You have resistance in here. I mean, all these points, it's like plumbing. Every time you make a turn or have something or a, a connector or a resisted load or whatever, your resistance is going to go up. And what resistance is, is resistance to current flow. That's why it, as your resistance goes up, your current flow goes down. But anyway, I'm going to quit getting too technical on this thing. And I'm going to draw the logic up as it's going to be when I wire the truck. So here it is with the third relay wired in. It is a little confusing, but let's explain it. So basically what happens here is this relay and this relay are wired exactly the same as they were in a two relay setup. What you're doing is kind of, it's kind of trick how they did this. So fan one, the ground out of it, instead of going to the chassis or back to the battery like I do in my case, I'm gonna run it into pin 30, this one, of a third relay. Now, this thing steady state normally closed will have the the inside of the relay will be going to 87A. So what they're doing here is taking the ground and running it through here, knowing that this is going to be a closed circuit to 87A, and they're going over and tapping into the power on the um, fan two. So your current path is now this way through this. All the way to ground so you've got between here and here you've got 12 volts so we know our voltage we know our resisted loads so as our resistance goes up our voltage stays the same our current drops so that's kind of a neat deal so when earlier when i mentioned the 40 20 relays that i'm using so my uh, current is going to be lower so i'm well within the limits of that 20 amps i think i'm like um, six point something amps is what I calculated that's going to be going through here to run these fans at half speed. So that's kind of how you wire that. On this half of it, you have your fan two, which is blue. Imagine that this line right here is blue and you're tapping into it and have another blue line that comes over to this relay. So this, these two relays are both triggered by fan two from the ECM. So when that fan two say so say this is at 200 and this is at 205 at 205 degrees this this clicks on the ecu says hey i want two fans so instead of running well two fans at full speed so it it triggers this which triggers this coil and this coil simultaneously what that's doing is it's, it's going to drop off this line here so it's going to take this this circuit's going to go dead and it's going to go straight to ground so this fan is going to start running full speed because you've got one resistive load your voltage, you know your, your voltage, it's Ohm's law, <clears throat> you know, so you're not dividing your voltage between the two resistive loads, you've got one, so boom, 12 volts full speed. At the same time when that happens, it's triggering this relay, it's pulling from a second circuit, well, the original second circuit, this clicks over to here, boom, one resistive load, 12 volts, full speed. So it's kind of confusing, and I'm going to put a picture up of this, and you kind of see the logic behind it, but it makes sense. So I mentioned earlier that the one thing I don't like about it, I call it a fatal flaw, but 
if this relay were ever to fail or this trigger line for some reason would fail, you could potentially have yourself a situation. If this relay doesn't trigger, this one's already triggered, this one triggers, you have battery coming from two different directions trying to feed this, this one fan. Um, that's not, not, not ideal, but I, I think the chances, as long as you use a good quality relay here and have good wiring and not anything janky, this is going to work. I mean, they do it in production cars and they have for, for a long time. So it's, it's, it's neat in it that this relay here, basically its entire job is to effectively take these two fans in and out of series. When you put a resistive load in series, it halves the voltage due to Ohm's law. So I just want to take a couple minutes and kind of discuss, you know, how the relay um, set up, what the relay logic is within the relay, how you set up um, just a, a single relay for one fan, two fans, and then how you can do the high-low setup. Um, I have also got to factor into this. Um, on, on mine, I, I, I mentioned that I am going to be running the uh, pressure switch on the high side of the AC line to have the ECU control the fans. Uh, I'm still going to use the same logic. But also, I'm going to, as a backup, if that does not work, I'm going to have wires going out so that I can trigger with the trinary switch. And that's basically going to be on these two here. And what I'm probably going to do most likely is I've got both wires running out there, and I could do it both ways, and I'm going to, I'm going to try it. If, it. if I have to, I'm going to try just having the vintage air trinary switch trigger fan one so they'll run them at both hand uh, half speed um and if that doesn't work then you have to have trigger in both of them so they both run full speed because you can't trigger this one if this one's not triggered it just doesn't work so um and then you also run into a sticky situation if this one ever calls um the ecm calls this one and this one's triggered by a trainer switch it just gets it gets a little uh dicey doing all that so uh, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm probably confusing it, but that's just kind of me thinking out loud of how I'm going to wire uh, my truck. But I hope this helps de demystify a little bit about the three relay setup and um, how it works. Uh, it's really pretty slick. It's super easy to do how to convert it. Um, I'm rewiring my whole thing because I'm going to a thicker gauge wire. Um, I ran 12 gauge wire and I should have run 12 or should have run 10. So I'm going to switch them all. But you know, if you have an existing two relay setup and you want to go to a three relay setup, all you have to do is tap into two wires, the trigger for fan two and the power going to fan two. And then this ground is just going to run to this relay and then out. So it's a pretty simple addition. If you already have the two relay setup, or if you're starting from scratch, this is kind of the wiring diagram for it. So I hope that helps. Um, like I say, please uh, drop a comment below if you have any questions or if you understand more about, I'm trying to draw a blank on what we were talking about um, earlier in the video. I'll probably put a description up here because I can't remember. But yeah, I hope that helps. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get back in the shop and try to work on uh, actually this right now. So I'm going to go downstairs and do some, uh, some wiring on this stuff right now. And uh, yeah, that's all we got for today. Hope you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching.